These right here are the C notes. It is a speaker kit that I picked up from Parts Express. Now, over the last few years, I have built a lot of speakers, and I know that a lot of you have built your own speakers as well. In fact, I did a survey on my channel a few months back, and about half of you have built your own home speakers. That means a little less than half of you have not. For those of you that have never built your own speaker, I strongly recommend that you start with a kit or a pre-made design. There are tons of them available. And in this video, we're gonna build these C-notes. Now this kit is especially nice for a beginner that doesn't have a lot of tools. And that's because it comes with what they call a knockdown cabinet. They went ahead and CNC cut all the recesses and the grooves and the dados so that you can just put this together really easy. And that's where we're gonna start right here. I've laid out all the parts so that I can just kind of fold it all together and I'm gonna put glue on all of the edges and seams. And after you've applied the glue, all you've gotta do is clamp everything together. In fact, you don't actually need any clamps. That's one of the really cool things about these CNC flat packs is you can literally just hold it together with tape while the glue dries. If you happen to have a brad nailer, you can drive in a few brad nails instead of using clamps. If you don't have a lot of clamps on hand, I do recommend that you pick a few up. You don't need a lot of really big ones in order to do this task. I do recommend one of these corner clamps or strap clamps. I don't recommend this one. I got this one at Harbor Freight. What you want is to get one that has a roll for the extra length of the strap or else you're gonna be fighting with the strap while you're trying to glue it all together. So after you fold the back and the sides up all together, you can then clamp the baffle on. The baffle is the front of the enclosure. And again, I've got tons of clamps laying around, so I've used far too many clamps. You could probably get away with just one or two of these, and they're not terribly expensive. You can pick them up just about anywhere. Now that was the easiest part of this build. The glue up itself can be done in an evening. You do have to let the glue dry. I'm using Tight Bond 2. Now if you want to work efficient, what you'll do is uh, set that aside while the glue dries and then start working on the crossover. You'll need to devise some method for mounting the crossover. Anything really will work. I like to put mine on acrylic because I usually have a few scrap pieces of it laying around. I can just quickly cut it down. Now my crossover board needs to fit inside of the woofer cutout. So maybe about four and a half inches is uh, as wide as it needs to be. I'm going to make mine about seven inches long. Any longer than that, you'll have a hard time fitting it inside of the enclosure. If you don't have a way of cutting down a crossover board, I've been known to actually glue the crossover components right down to the inside bottom of the enclosure. If you're gonna go that route, you want to assemble the crossover probably before you assemble the box so that you can get to the parts. Now that the glue is set up on the enclosure, I'm actually gonna turn my attention to the paint. My plan is to just use blue spray paint on these. The problem with that is that uh, MDF tends to soak up the paint, especially along the edges. So something has to be done to keep that from happening. So I'm gonna use this product right here. This is called sanding sealer. My goal here is to seal the MDF so that I don't have to use 50 cans of spray paint to get a good finish on this thing. Just follow the instructions on the can. You're supposed to apply it, let it dry, and then sand it. But don't sand too aggressively because you don't want to sand off all of the sanding sealer. In order to be efficient while the sanding sealer is drying, I'm going to work on the crossover. Now the crossover for this project is a little bit complicated. It's got a lot of parts. There's only two components for the woofer. That's going to be the low pass filter that sends the signal to this five inch aluminum cone woofer here. Just a coil and a capacitor. But the high side has five components and so it's a little bit more complex. I ended up spending quite a bit of time just sitting down with the crossover components and setting them down, trying different arrangements, trying to figure out what the best way to lay out the crossover board was. And that turned out to be a complete waste of time because the instructions that come with the kit have a crossover layout that works great. I couldn't find one that worked better. Okay, now the sanding sealer is dry, so I'm gonna grab some spray paint and start working on the enclosure. I'm just using Krylon. There's nothing special about it. The color I used was a true blue gloss. First thing that I noticed was the sanding sealer really helped out a lot. The MDF didn't just absorb the first couple of layers of spray paint like it typically does. The best advice I can give you for spray painting a project like this is to make multiple light passes and you want to avoid runs. If you spray it on too thick, you'll get these runs. If you get too many runs, you'll end up sanding it back down to bare MDF and starting over again. So just be careful with that. Slow and steady wins the race. 
This project actually took me several weeks to complete because I spent a lot of time watching paint dry. But in between the paint applications, you can work on the crossover. So for the crossover assembly, I started on the low pass side because the low pass side was the easiest. I laid the bigger inductor, 1.4 millihenries down and used hot glue to attach it to the board. And then I wired it to the capacitor. Now this is a little bit tricky right here. The positive for the woofer is gonna come in to the inductor and then the positive for the woofer is gonna then connect in between the inductor and the capacitor. The negative for the woofer will come from the driver over to the other end of that capacitor and then from there back to the speaker terminal. And now that the low pass section is finished, it's time to spray on another coat of paint. If you're using spray paint like this, you might find it helpful to let the paint cure for a day or two before you actually touch the enclosures. It only needs to dry for about 30 or so minutes in between coats, but the paint will still be kind of soft to the touch and you can still get fingerprints in the paint. And because it's still a little bit tacky, when you turn the enclosure over to paint the underside of it, the top side's gonna stick to your table and you'll have to sand that down and repaint it. And as you're waiting for the paint to dry, you'll have plenty of time to work on the crossover. For the high pass filter, we're gonna take that six ohm resistor. We're gonna lay it down right beside the inductor from the low pass section. We're gonna connect those together right here. This is gonna be the positive input for both the low pass and the high pass sections of the crossover. Then we're gonna to move to the 5.1 microfarad cap. That is the largest cap on the high pass side and connect that to the other end of the resistor. That cap will then be connected to one of the two smaller capacitors. I do believe there are two microfarad. And at that point, you're also gonna connect the smaller inductor. Now this right here is important. You wanna make sure you don't get crosstalk between the inductors. So the idea here is if you look through one of the inductors, you shouldn't be able to see the other and they should be oriented 90 degrees from each other. So we're gonna lay the bigger one down. The next step is to take the other small capacitor, the other two microfarad capacitor, and connect it to the first one. And this is the point where the tweeter positive is gonna connect. So the tweeter itself will connect to this point in the crossover here. The tweeter negative then comes to the other side of this capacitor where it will tie in with the small inductor and then connect to the speaker terminal. Now that I've got the first crossover wired up, it's back to the paint for another coat. After finishing the second crossover, then it's back to the paint. This time I hit it with a couple of layers of clear coat. I'm always trying to up my game on every project. Every project I try something new or try to get a little bit better at something that I've done in the past. And this time I'm gonna try wet sanding it. So I've got some really fine sandpaper. I'm gonna spray a little bit of water on the enclosure and sand it to see what I get. The end result was a really smooth finish and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Not too bad for my first attempt at ever wet sanding. And while I've got a second, I want to say thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon with a special shout out to Dylan, Bo, and Baba. The support of my patrons makes this content possible. If you want to support DIY content, head over to Patreon and check us out. Now it's time to install the crossover board. And just like the rest of this project, I'm trying out new things. Typically, I use the hot glue to glue the crossover board down. So this time I've drilled a hole in my crossover board. I'm just going to try screwing it down. I've got a right angle attachment for my drill. I've got some extenders. It turned out it was no more difficult than trying to glue it down and I feel like it made a more secure connection. If you do this, keep in mind this is made out of half inch MDF so you don't want to use a screw longer than half inch. Now the kit comes with these adjustable ports but I ran into a little bit of a problem. It turns out that the outer sleeve on this adjustable port wouldn't fit into the port cutout. So what do I do? Well, here's what I did. I grabbed some speaker gasket tape because that's what I had laying around. Any kind of thick tape would work, some double-sided tape, several layers of masking tape or something. And I just used that to kind of make a buffer so that when I slide the port on in a little bit, it'll stop right at seven inches. I also added a little bit of gasket tape around the back side of the port to make sure that I've got a good seal and then just slid the port in from the back and then inserted the outer sleeve through the tweeter hole. I'm just using super glue to hold the two port pieces together. Uh, some people call this CA glue. So any type of super glue or CA glue will work. I recommend that you use the thick gel kind. 
Now, since this is made out of MDF, I strongly recommend that you pre-drill all of your screw holes. That's a best practice for any material you happen to be working with. I like to use a center punch to mark out the holes before I drill them. Now, I think the drivers for this build look absolutely amazing. The tweeter is a one inch soft dome tweeter with a Neo magnet and it's attached to this cool waveguide and the enclosure has been CNC cut to recess the tweeter and the woofer is going to slightly overlap the waveguide. I just like the looks of these drivers. They're attractive. That's a big part of building a speaker. You want it to look good, you want it to sound good. And now that we've got the driver screwed in, it's time to give it a listen and see how it sounds. I've got some YouTube approved music here on this track and I'm playing it through the speakers using this Bluetooth amplifier. My listening impressions, not too shabby. The low end is not particularly impressive and that is fair because it's only a five inch driver. I think this would sound really good in a 2.1 system teamed up with something like say a Tang Band W6. I just happen to have one of those laying around. Click right here to see the build video for that subwoofer. I am Justin, the DIY audio guy, and I will see you on the next adventure.